Okay, let's not climb the inside of the rock. Let's go right back out. I was trying to just climb that rock, but it doesn't want me to do that. Okay, well, never mind. I'll just I'll just run around the side of the mountain. Um, I, I'm not. I, graphics are important, yes, but they're not at the top of that important list. Like the most important thing to a video game is gameplay. Second is graphics. Maybe even third. Like you gotta have good, good, fun, enjoyable gameplay to make a video game truly work. Um, the graphics are important because without the graphics, you couldn't see. Like, with no graphics, you could not see. That's what a graphic is. But, like, they don't need to be super high-end, ultra HD, oh my gosh, this is amazing-looking, realistic graphics. They don't have to be that. Beast of Bermuda is proof of that. It's got, it's got a large fan base. Um, yeah, Beast of Bermuda has a very large fan base, uh, and its graphics are not, are not like, super high-end, ultra epic amazing. They're just, they're, they're just, they're there t for the game. And, like, don't get me wrong, they are improving, but they're not, like, this game can run in, you know, like, this many FPS and blah, 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 kind of amazing. Alright, let's see, is this, this, no, this is not the area. There's a little, like, nook that you can tuck into as a velo. It's more than just this, though. It's, like, a whole space. And I know, because I found it and explored it the other day, I just gotta do it again. Hmm, where is it at? And I know it's at this back wall with a portal somewhere. That's where I wanted to... I wanted to tuck in there so I can... Ah, yeah, here we go. Oh, okay, well, this this isn't it, but still, this works. Okay, I want to tuck back here so I can discuss the talent tree. This way I can discuss it without getting ganked by something. Okay, this is what makes Beast of Bermuda better than the Isle. is because this changes how you play. This is your talent tree. Um, all the stuff you see here that's highlighted in blue... That's your survival skills. Anything down over here is going to highlight in red. Those are your combat skills. Anything up here is going to highlight in green. Those are your speed skills. This will change how you play your, play your dino every single time. Now, there are dinos that have specific play styles, and that makes it... Uh, that that kind of makes some skills either necessary or no-brainers for that dino. Um, for example, the Ichthy, you're going to want to go speed combat. You're going to want to specialize more so in speed than combat because that's just what they're, that's what they're naturally good at. A lot of people will go speed with Velos as well because Velos are also, you know, good at being fast. Um, they're just naturally quick little critters. Uh, it's also a good one for the Meg. Um, but like other creatures like the Rex, you know, the Acro, the Apato, the Psy, you're going to want to go heavy combat, heavy survival because that's good for that dino, right? So there's certain things, certain trees, certain skills you're always going to want depending on the dino you are. As a Velociraptor, you can do pretty much anything. So like, I'm building this guy out heavily in the survival tree, right? Like I've got most of my survival tree covered. I should probably still get this eventually, but right now I'm focused on getting this other stuff. Um, and then I, I got an inherit aqua affinity, but I want sneaky, right? Because sneaky will... Um, reduce the volume and attenuation of your footsteps and your breathing sounds. So, like, when I sleep, I won't snore so much. So I want my three out of three sneaky for that reason. This way I can kind of tuck into corners like this and curl up and hide without anything really knowing that I'm there. Especially since recently they added an ability to the sneaky skill that, like, lessens your scent. So, like, when I'm out of th with three out of three in sneaky, I believe if with that, if I'm sitting, um, you can't, like, I, I leave no scent when I'm sitting. Um, and like your scent cloud will shrink the, with the more um, sneaky you have, which used to be a skill called cleanliness that was in the survival tree. And now they've rolled that back into sneaky specifically, the sneaky skill. So with this guy, uh, I'm going for a specific build based on how I want to roleplay him. If I was going to a normal server and was just going to play Velo, there would be a lot that I would be getting. Um, so, like, how to explain this? Okay, so with Velociraptor, because you can be a little agent of chaos, I'm, I'm setting aside the roleplay aspect. Because you can be a little agent of chaos, uh, you can spec into... You're always going to want weather resistance, because Velos cannot handle the weather in the game. That's just it. Get yourself some weather resistance. Even if you only have one point, that one point will make a difference. Uh, but get yourself some weather resistance. Um, three out of three if you do not want to be struck by lightning. I personally have never been struck by lightning, but I know it happens. Um, but I also almost always, with a lot of my dinos, go for that weather resistance, depending on the dino. I've only recently started to back off of that. Uh, but with, like, Velo, I'm always going to have that weather resistance. With Ori, 
weather resistance. Even when I played Para for a short while before the remodel dropped, uh, I had weather resistance because you're not going to want to be a Para in a cave. Um, there's just too many carnivores. So, um, as Velo, Sturdy is always a good skill because this helps you mitigate um, an instant hit. And like if you have to get any inherits in it, that will help with that. Um, inherits are based off, and you can see, you can see I have an inherit. It's, I've got zero to three, but it says plus one inherited. I'm pointing at the screen like an idiot, like you can see me, but it, you, you get the idea. It's up there on the screen, you can see it for yourself. Because if I mouse away, it, it goes away. Or at least the, the, def, the description goes away. But like swiftness, yeah, I've got an inherit in it. Um, inherits are really what make this game um, work well. In addition to the talent tree, because there's there's a big genetic system worked into here. Like in the aisle, you grow hatchlings just for longer growth and for an immediate teleport to a pack or a herd. So like that's really the only reason to ever take an egg in the aisle is just to immediately be wherever your friends are. That's it. That is it. And in Evermud, they don't even have nesting yet. Um, but with this game, not only do you get that teleport, but Depending on what talents in this tree your parents have specced into, you might get inherits in them. And as a spawn, you are guaranteed at least... When I first started playing, it was at least two good inherits. Um, and you used to be able to get negative inherits, which I'll get into that in a minute. Um, but, you know, right now spawns get, I think... I think spawns can get, depending on the dino, a maximum of five, good, of five inherits. Um, let's see, I got... The Constitution and the Swiftness and then the Aqua Affinity. So I got three. So this tells me that Velos get on average get three. I think I've gotten up to four with the spawn. So like maybe with Velos the minimum is three. And normally you will not have two uh, tier five inherits on a spawn dino. That is rare. That's that's why I was excited that I got two. Even though Constitution sucks for the Velo, you know it it it, it, it doesn't hurt the Velo. It just doesn't really benefit you enough. To be worthwhile, um, even though Constitution sucks, it's still good. It's still cool that I got two tier five inherits on a velo, on a spawn velo. But like, if I were nested, I could get inherits in every single tier. Cause like, okay, this ring right here, this is tier one. Uh, you've got tier two right here. Well, this is okay. Tier two is here, uh, and there, and there, and there, and then tier three is like these two, those two. Uh, this one's tier three, that's tier three, and these are tier three, and then the others are tier five. Um, and you can only get, like, tiers one through five inherits, because you can keep growing past the point. Like, when you hit tier two, you're at 1.2, right? Like, 1.2 is the last time you can get any inherits, period. So, like, regardless of whether or not you were spawn or nested, that's the last time you get inherits. Uh, but as a nested dinosaur, you can get more inherits. Now, you can get negative inherits... Uh, not only from being an nested dino, but if your parents inbred, there's actually an inbreeding system in this game. So, like, if you breed back to one of your parents, if you breed to a sibling or half-sibling, um, that's all considered incest. But what's not considered incest in the game is you could breed to, like, your grandparent or to, like, uh, your aunt or uncle, you know, things like that. You could breed to your cousin and it's not considered incest. Um, don't do that in real life. That's bad. But like in this video game specifically, it's fine. In this video game, um, that's what you can do. Um, now, Velos, even though b because we are small, we have fast metabolism, so we need a lot of food. So I'm going to go look for food again because my hunger is getting low. Um, that's not the little Velo hole I was looking for, but it's a Velo hole and it will work. Um, I absolutely hate the lighting in the caves. It never used to be this bad. It never ever used to be that bad. It's gotten bad. Like the last couple of updates have really kind of messed it up. It used to be that you would have like this little shimmer of darkness when you first went in, and then it was like your eyes would adjust and you could improve, you could, you know, see better. And I could turn shadows off, and it used to make a difference. Now it makes no difference. So I just keep the shadows on anyway because I might as well have it look pretty outside because I've got a machine that can handle it, right? Um, okay, so from up here I should be able to smell any kind of gore. Um, anyone who plays the game regularly is sitting there going, why isn't there more gore around? Well, it's because in, in realism and semi-realism servers, they want to encourage realistic behaviors. And realistically, there's just not going to be a lot of dead shit laying around. So, that's why. 
Um, but yeah, as a Velo, uh, we are little agents of chaos because let, let me give you a quick little overview here. Speed is always good, but combat is also good, and survival is also good. So like, I'm sp I've spec fully into scavenger. What scavenger allows you to do is to eat rotten meat, uh, and not take a penalty for it. Um, and then be and then in addition, you gain food satiation, which can normally only be achieved from player gore, uh, from regular gore. So like. If you have three out of three scavenger and you eat player gore, oh, you're going to be solid for a while. Um, for a good while. Uh, I'm actually going to head back to Snowy Mountain because I think that's where I'm, gonna, where I'm likely going to find things. Um, but yeah. Uh, specking into combat as a Vila was not an unviable strategy. Uh, specking into any tree, even if you specialize as the Vila, was not an unviable strategy because Vilos are good for stealing eggs, they're good for stealing hatchlings, they're good for fighting birds, they're good for eating rotten meat, you know, they're good for you know just being fat. We There's so much we can do just in the base game as Velos that, you know, even even in the hardcore realism and semi-realism servers, they, they, they can't really, they, you can only limit a Velo so much because we're just little natural agents of chaos. Um, the hardcore realis realism servers will have Harsher profiles, harsher penalties for playing that way. But, like, if they're good about it, they're not going to force you to take talents. Yes, the Velo is labeled as a scavenger. Uh, and yes, we can spec into that. However, most carnivores can also spec into scavenger. So, like, it's not a requirement. Although I heard recently that on Walking, they um, actually made it a requirement to take scavenger as a Velo, which is incredibly stupid. Like, way to, al way to further alienate your fan base. Like that was that was probably one of the that was probably one of the dumbest things they've done. Um, and the reason I, sh I say walking is because the uh, official server name is Walking with Dinosaurs. Yes, I'm going to trash talk it because I've played on it, so it's just like yeah. And like, there's some good things about it. I, I enjoy their profiles more, right? Because when I want to go realism, I usually want to go hardcore. Um, but like. I mean, not all the time, not all the time, but like when I, when I want to go full on realism, I prefer hardcore because that way it's like, okay, my animal will behave this way. And it makes it more fun with, from a role play standpoint, because in a lot of realism servers, the global chat is disabled uh, and you're not allowed to use local chat. Local chat is specifically for, you know, little brief, little, little, little brief blurbs. Like when I asked the pair if he wanted to be groomed um, on a semi realism server like this one, that's. That's low key. It's just like, yeah, okay, that's fine. Whatever, you can get away with that. But like on Walking with Dinosaurs, it would be, they would immediately hit me with like, name? What's your name? I need to put you in a report because you chat you chatted in local. And like you'll you'll hear in some of the videos, me and Pansky and the others just being like, name. Walking with Dinosaurs is what we're making fun of because that was the it became the single most pretentious word on the whole server because there's a rule over there. I'm gonna hide in here and gather my stamina. There was a rule over there where. Um, you know, you couldn't chat in local except to ask for someone's name for report purposes. And, like, they had it worded at the time specifically for report purposes. We would also occasionally use it if we were trying to join a group and, like, something wasn't going right. But I'll get into that later. Um, but, yeah, for the most part, that's what it was used for. So name became the single most pretentious word on that entire server. And, like, people would, would ask or would demand your name for any little thing. Any little thing. You know, just, ugh, so much toxicity on that server. And even when they finally realized, oh, crap, we have a problem, having run a real, having helped to run a realism server myself on the aisles super early days, I know that when it gets to that point, it's just going to crash and burn because that's what happens to every realism server, every single one, which sucks because there's nothing wrong with hardcore realism roleplay. Nothing wrong with it. But, you know, if you don't crack down on certain behaviors early on, if you don't squash them immediately, your server will be overrun by a bunch of pretentious pricks. Um, and that's not even the kids. That's just, that's, that's everyone. Alright. Oh, hey, there's rotten gore over there. I can eat that. The best thing about rotten gore when you have respect in a scavenger is nobody else cares about the rotten gore, so they're just going to leave you alone. Um, or at least they aren't going to challenge you for it. They might try to hunt you, which is, which is allowed, but they won't challenge you for the gore. Unless they're another scavenger. Um, and even then, only if they've specced into it. 
So, like, because this thing is sniffing yellow, I know it's really bad. But that's good for me because my food is low. Oh, there's an acro nearby. Oh, hey, there's red gore nearby, too. I think the acro doesn't realize there's red gore. I mean, I'll take the red gore if I can, just because the red gore will give me additional satiation. Um, but, like, the rotten gore isn't going to hurt me. Because I've got 3 out of 3 in scavenger. Which, again, viable strategy. Velos, agents of chaos, right? Lots of little gores around here. There's no one else here. I mean, yeah, that acro's back that way, so hey. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab a leg. This is another thing you can do that you can't do in the aisle. Is pick up gore. And where's the rotten gore? I'm going to go up here with it. Oh, it's like a measly few... But it's like a measly bite. Oh, well, that's okay. I'll just eat this. Um, but yeah. Yeah, there's there's a lot you can do specifically as the Velociraptor because you're just a little agent of chaos. You can steal eggs, you can steal kids, you can hunt birds. Uh, yeah, it's just really, really good. Oh, it's going to make me sick. No, you're not going to make me sick. I got Scavenger. I ain't worried about this. And I normally don't take Scavenger unless it's necessary. I feel like it's necessary on Temporal Triangle's Rival Shores because, you know, new server, they're still trying to get it off the ground, and the gore spawns are not not quite so good for what they're doing. Um, like on Ancestral Plains, which is, the, these are the names of the maps, just to be clear, uh, they've got their gore spawn there pretty good. Uh, and so, now sometimes there are times where even as a velo, you just have to log and play something else because there's no food around. You know, whether that is eggs or birds or gore. Like sometimes that's just how it is. Um, so you just have to log your dino and come back and feed it another day. Uh, but on Rival Shores here, since this server's only been up for a couple of weeks, I think, if that, um, you know, they're trying to get populations going and whatnot. So they're still trying to balance out uh, things like gore spawns and whatnot. Which is why I expected a scavenger. Um, so for the roleplay aspect, I've got two main velo types. This guy right here is ultimately going to be my bird hunter. I don't have enough talent points yet, but I'm going to spec him into winged hair. Persistence, Stoic, Sharp Teeth, Brawler, I'm sorry, that's Sharp Teeth, Bru Brawler and Bruiser. These skills all stack together and will make me very dangerous to a bird, specifically to the trope. Uh, tropes are the larger of the two flyers at the moment, and the tropes are very susceptible to wing tear. It's much harder to down a Pteranodon than it is to down a trope, which is funny because the Pteranodons are smaller, but then again, eh, <coughs> The tropes are just more susceptible to it. I'm not sure why that is. I just know that it is. Um, so for the roleplay purposes, this guy... I call him Fireball for obvious reasons. Um, but he's actually a very chill velo. He's going to find you know, either a pack or a herd that he likes that will accept him and his groomies. And he will adopt them and just hang out with them for the day. And if there's a threat, he might, you know, alarm call. But he's not going to like break profile and go, you know... Um, helping them. That would be seen as mix-packing. I need water now. I know there's some back this way. Um, and so because of that, I've got him spec heavily into the survival tree because the survival tree is what helps mitigate things like intimidation, which is what the para and the apato were giving me and why my comfort was going low. Um, <clears throat> that's the next thing I should get into, I suppose. Oof. My... Uh, my throat's getting dry because I've been talking a lot. This is technically... Yeah, if, if I do it that way, it's a rule break. Okay. Because you're not supposed to mesh. Oh, I can drink right here. I'm holding my head up because if I don't, I'll drown. Oh, okay. It, it's... Alright, yeah. It's fine now. Alright. Whoop. There we go. Okay. Um, let's see. Throat getting dry because of all the talking. Uh, I need... Uh, pardon me. I need to be able to discuss the next thing I was going to discuss, which was... Um, 
Was it more about the talent tree? I don't remember now. At any rate, um, the talent tree is a game changer. And, you know, getting a nested dinosaur is better because you'll get the better inherits because that, that way you can have more points into stuff. Um, you can have a plus two in an inherit. Plus twos are very rare, but when you get them, they make all the difference. Just all the difference. So, like, I'm hiding in here because nothing can bite me through the log. So, uh, for example, um, if I, I'm going to eventually build a bird hunter, right? If I had gotten a plus two in wing tear, which is incredibly rare, that would be absolutely perfect. Because as, as you can see, this increases the damage dealt, or the, the damage and injury dealt to flyers. And what you want to focus on is the injury. So for injury, if I want more injury, I'm going to max out that wing tear. And then I'm going to come down here to bruiser, which increases injury damage. It increases injury specifically. And injury is different from damage. Injury will make you like limp and you know like like it's bone breaking like it, it makes you stop walking makes you well not stop but like make you, it makes you heavily limp it makes you weak it slows you down so injury is great for subduing prey while the damage will eventually kill it so for a good bird hunter i'm gonna want i'm going to need bruiser um brawler isn't bad because it maxes out your damage it like increases your damage uh but it's mostly just a matter of i'm going through brawler to get to bruiser and then both of these will stack with wing tear because wing tear increases the damage and injury dealt and then brawl will increase the am the damage and uh, bruiser will increase the injury and then if i add that to sharp teeth this will allow for a boost of damage in larger prey all right larger as it's, and tropes are bigger than velos so having those four skills stacked together the more talent points i put into those the more my damage output, the more, the more they stack together, the more my damage and injury output, the worse off a trope is going to be. I've actually already got a video on my channel right now uh, showing this in action. It's called, uh, oh, what does I call it? I called it the beauty of wing tear because that was um, shortly after the wing tear skill dropped. I got a velo and I don't remember if I got an inherited wing tear or if I just maxed it out, but I, I, I specced into that wing tear and then I went and I raided Tyranodon Island and I took down a huge trope. Now, for examples on what's huge, a lot of us will talk about no, the number, the growth number up here. Like 1.2 is where you get your last uh, inherit, and that's true of that's true across the board. That's true no matter what dinosaur you play. Um, but then, like your the growth cap in the game is 5.0, and that's that's big no matter what dino you are. Like that's big even for a velo. Um, I don't personally know anyone who has ever hit 5.0. Um, my friend Pansky says that he met someone who's a pado hit 5.0, and what he does is, um, uh, let's see, you see, uh, let's see, can, okay, the log's in the way, but that mountain back there, past all the trees, that snowy mountain, right? What he'll do is he'll start as a pado on one side, and he'll go through, and he'll just eat all the trees all the way up, and then all the way back down, and then he will log off, because that's about all you can do, because the more, the bigger you get, the more you have to maintain your hunger and your thirst and you know that's all part of the survival game yeah you're hard you hit harder you're harder to take down because you got you know an increased pool of health stamina and ability but like your hunger decreases faster your thirst decreases faster because you are big because it takes it takes that to maintain a larger body um which is why which is why certain monster movies are completely ridiculous like don't get me wrong i got nothing against godzilla but at the end of the day what the heck is he gonna eat Really, what's he going to eat? Because he needs food. He needs food. People would certainly not be enough. He could vacuum us all up like ants, but the whole species extinct and still don't have enough to eat because he's too dang big. Um, and that's any iteration of Godzilla, mind you. That's that's talking purely on the... Uh, on uh, That's talking purely, but that's, that's strictly metabolism. Strictly biological talk. You would not be able to eat anything if you were that big. Um... Because there would never be enough food on the there wouldn't be enough food on the whole world for you to eat, even if you were a plant eater, you'd eat all the plants in the world, still not have enough because eventually you would just deforest the whole planet. Um, so yeah, like that plays that plays a role here in this game is is you know the bigger you are, the more you need to eat, and like you'll see me running around looking for food quite often, even as a velo. Velos eat a lot more than people realize they they do. 
Like, we need food almost constantly. And that's partially because we grow fast, even as we're bigger. Because, like, once you hit one, once you hit 1.0, your growth tapers off a lot. And then when, after you hit 1.2, it tapers off even more. So, like, my growth... If I wanted to, get, if I really wanted to get this velo all the way up to 5.0, it's gonna take me a very, very, very long time. Several hours in game, like so many hours that it will probably take literal months of in-game time in order to get to 5.0. Now that's the, that's just to get to the big one. I can get to 2.0 probably in if I if I was if I was in if I didn't need to eat, drink, or sleep. Um, and my machine didn't need to do things like, you know, recuperate, I could probably get to 2.0, uh, in like two or three days of just constant playing. Easily. As a velo, not as anything else. As anything else is going to take longer. Um, whoop. Okay, there we go. Uh, but yeah. So, like, getting to the big growth numbers takes a long time. And when you, when you, of course, when you lose a dino that's reached these big growth times, it's, it's sad because you put a lot of time and effort into that dino, right? And on the one hand, yeah, this creates its own problems. But on the other hand, you know, it's, that is also the nature of the game, right? Like, that's just how this is. I'm going in here because I know there's crystals and I would like to get an herbal buff. The buff is called Healthy Herbs. And yes, there are buffs and debuffs in this game which will affect your growth. Uh, that's the other thing I didn't talk about. The growth system. Um, <clears throat> outside of having um, a higher cap than the aisle. Oh, something's been in here already. I'm going to get out. <laughs> outside of having a higher growth cap than the aisle, um, this will also have... Um, like, like, there's stuff that helps you grow faster and stuff that makes you grow slower. So, like... There's always a baseline amount that you're going to grow. And the bigger you get, the harder that is to reach. Uh, and the longer it takes, the more time it takes. But you'll see uh, the icon in my upper left, in the upper left here. This is water satiation. Um, this will, not, not, not only will satiation make it so that I can go longer without um, drinking, but like with that satiation, I grow a little faster. And that satiation will stack with food satiation, which will stack with... Uh, eating healthy herbs, which will stack with being near children. So, like, there's that's another reason to breed in this game. You want you want to breed your dino because you get a growth buff from being near your kids. Um. So yeah, and it's just like, it, it's wonderfully done. It really is. It's it's a very well done system, and they're still constantly tweaking it. Um, you know, to make things more balanced, to make things better. Um. Like they've they've done a lot of really good really good solid work on this game. I'm very I'm very impressed with it. I'm very pleased by it. Um, I don't remember if I bought this game, or if Kitty was kind enough to gift it to me. If she was, thanks again because I've gotten many hours of enjoyment out of it. Um, and I've also bought the game several times for other people now. So because I'm like, hey, come play this game with me. It's fun, and they have, and it's been and it's been great. Um, let's see. But yeah, you'll have you'll have buffs that will help with your growth. You will also get debuffs that will slow your growth. So like right here you see I have comfort. My comfort is 49. The comfort is also um, the circle with the dinosaur skeleton in it. That acts as both your health and your comfort. If the color starts to go down, like like not change, but like if there's like an actual like visible line where it looks like the color is draining, your health is going away. Um, but the color change will indicate how comfortable you are. And the more comfort you have, the faster you grow. So ideally you want to have all those buffs I mentioned on top of 100 comfort and things like shelter will also give you comfort. So like I was in that log that gave me some shelter. There's a little, uh, shelter thing right here. I'd get none in the open, but like if I get near this rock, 